SB 17 is a harmful piece of legislation that passed through the Texas legislature last May. Through SB 17, universities would be required to disband DEI-related services and offices. This means multicultural centers at universities, LGBTQ resource centers, and many of the culturally specific programming that makes college campuses feel like home to both students faculty and professors. SB 17 implementation has not been standardized and there's been given no support or guidance by the Texas legislators to these universities. So we've seen how the dangerous effects of this implementation and how some of our most marginalized students are being even more marginalized. Thinking about SB, how SB 17 has affected UT Austin, which has the largest black studies department within the country. A department that's been ravaged where you've seen rampant faculty leaving and many students even transferring out of the school to pursue academic options elsewhere. Texas has had no transparency throughout this overall process, not giving students an opportunity to document how their own experiences um, throughout this implementation process. The SB 17 hearing that was called requires universities to submit documentation around how SB 17 has been implemented on campuses. Yet there was never an opportunity for public testimony specifically for professors and students to engage. What organi uh, advocacy organizations, professors, and all of those who really want to stand in solidarity with students really need to do is listen to them. What are their current needs? Students who are under physical, emotional, mental, and now intellectual attacks on all fronts, they really have no pathways for safety. So there's a lot of fear and skepticism surrounding those systems. The success of Brown v. Board lies in the relationship between the grassroots organizing that led to the litigation and how that litigation was built off of the community voices that had been fighting for in integration for decades. We should learn from the lesson that our community organizations, our grassroots leaders, should not be brought into these advocacy spaces at the last moment. They need to be the ones who are designing these spaces, who are creating the culture of advocacy.